Okay, let's start. We visit Python from statements and peg. This is 30 minutes long English talk with English write. This talk was pre-recorded on July 20th. I would like to thank all the staff who worked so hard to make this online event possible. Thank you very much. Can you write if and for and function in Python? If you answered, of course. Congrats, you are target audience. I will talk about appearance of Python, such as if write needs a colon and so on. You know the components of Python statements and you hear explanation of the statement from different viewpoint. And we read together the page. Do you consider Python language difference difficult? I have tried repeatedly to read the references and find it exciting now that I know a little more. Dram dramatical changes occurred in Python 3.9 silently, and confusion between new and old grammatical expressions may make us feel difficulty. As a first step, I will try to resolve the confusion in this talk. Let me talk about myself a little. I love Python and anime. About Python Conference Japan, I was contributing as staff since 2019. And last year, I was chair on PyCon JP 2021. I'm working at UserBase as a data scientist, and so do NLP with Python, and we are hiring. I also talk implement Xion with Python on this PyCon APAC. First of all, as an introduction, I will talk two points about statement in programming. First, about high level and low level. This slide shows the contrast. Left side, human read and write high level languages, such as Python and other programming languages, while machines read and write machine languages. As an example, I wrote a simple if statement program. It branches when the input name is Mario and when it is not. In executing the script, uh, it typed Nikki. Nikki does not match Mario, so it says it's not Mario. If you type Mario, it says it's me, Mario. For humans to write programs in high level languages, Machines convert program written in high level language into machine language. Machines read not only machine language, but also high level languages. Machine recognize the structure of programs written in high level languages. In my opinion, statement allows machines to understand the structure of the program. Second, let's think about compilation. I refer to the book, The Elements of Computing Systems. I will show you an example of compilation. Source codes written in Python are converted into bytecode. Uh, bytecode is the internal representation in the interpreter and cached in PYC files. See the compilation in the if statement example. This is a source code. Compilation consists of a number of steps, but I will pick up only two. One is lexical analysis, and the other is abstract syntax tree. Source code is string. In lexical analysis, machines pass source code into tokens. Token is the smallest unit of meaning. For lexical analysis, you can use a standard Python library, tokenize. Here is the result of talking the if statement. Next, let's look at abstract syntax trees, also called AST. Machines handle the structure of a program by representing it as a tree. Machine outputs an abstract syntax tree from a sequence of tokens. An abstract syntax tree can be created by using the module AST from standard library. 
syntax includes abstract syntax as well as concrete syntax. Abstract one is interpreted by the interpreter. Concrete one represents the appearance of a programming language. Concrete syntax determines, for example, how if statement would be written. Uh, it is concrete syntax that I will be talking this time. Let's dive deeply into the current appearance of compound statements in Python. Prior to making AST, the machine called parser reads whether tokens match Python's concrete syntax or not. This talk will give you the viewpoint of parser. In this talk, I will share the meaning of colons and indents, and we will read peg and test it together. Colons and indents tell parser components of statement. After reading peg together, you will maybe notice concise expression without omissions. I will talk about this in three major parts. Okay, part one start. One of my favorite Python document is the grocery. I often look up in the grocery and when I look up statement, it says a uh, statement is part of a seed. Seed is a block of code. Uh, the, the reference includes simple statements and compound statements, but we will focus on compound one in this time. The reference says compound statements contain other statements. An example of a compound statement is this if statement we saw earlier, the Mario if statement. In addition to if, there are other compound statements such as try and with, but the overview of a compound statement is a control flow. I click the link, sorry, and control flow. It controls or compound statement controls the execution of other statements considered in it. Oops, um, there are three elements that make up a compound statement, clause, header, and suite. What is a clause? The reference says that a compound statement consists of one or more clauses. Here is an example consisting of two clauses. The first clause is line two, if, and followed, 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 following line three. And the second clause is line for else and follow line five. There are two components of a clause, header and suite. Headers begin with a uniquely identifying keyword and end with a colon. What is a keyword? Keywords are special, spe sorry, specific tokens besides those listed here, if or else or, and the other example is class. Header begins with a keyword and ends with a colon. For example, uh, please see line two. Um, it starts with the keyword if and ends colon, so it is a header. Line four is also header because it begins keyword else and ends with colon. So what is a suite? Suite is one or more indented statements following the header. This is an example of a suite. Line three and five also are indented, so they are suite. A suite is a collection of statements, so it can contain multiple statements. Also, suites can nest compound statements you can put other compound statements inside a suite of compound statement. I wrote a false statement in a suite of if statement. I think you can already see that there is a header and a suite for that false statement as well. A short summary is here. A compound statement consists of clauses or headers and suites. When you forget colon or indent, 
you see syntax errors, but colons correspond to headers and indents corresp correspond to suites. I was impressed that explanation of the reference matches the Python I usually write. To add a little more about the statement, the glossary continues that a statement is either an expression or one or uh, one of several constructs with a keyword. So sometimes a statement is expression, and sometimes it consists of constructs with a keyword. Keywords are reserved words. For example, uh, they cannot use as variables. And uh, this is another topic. The glossary says a statement is an expression. What is an expression? It is a piece of syntax which can be evaluated to some value. If we look at glossary a little further, an expression is an accumulation of expression elements which return a value. The expression is defined with expression itself recursively. Here are some examples of an accumulation of expression elements. Uh, literal is an expression. Uh, in this example, uh, the integer uh, is a uh, literal, so it is expression. Another example of an uh, element of an expression is the operator. Uh, 33 minus 4, uh, this is operator, is an expression using operators. Uh, there is more, but I will introduce just one more. A function call is also an element of an expression. Here's an expression that uses a string literal to call the print function. This is an example we've, we've seen all along. Note that the expression itself is a statement. So lines three and five are expressions because they are function calls. And the expression itself is a statement. So oh, each line is a statement and it becomes sweet. Part one finished. Next, part two. PEG stands for Passing Expression Grammar. Uh, PEP 617 introduced a new PEG parser for C Python. Since Python 3.9, the parser has actually been quietly replaced by a PEG based one. In both PEG and PrePEG, a sequence of rules of the form are defined as a grammar. In the definition of a rule in PEG, a uh, rule name comes first, followed by a column, and then an expression. Uh, we will see how expression is written later. To be able to read definitions of rules, let's look at how to read the expression. You can find it on PEP 617. You will see a lot of symbols. This is the first half. I will introduce them in order. Literals are written in single quotes. Here is an example of the keyword else. Next, white space. Uh, E1 space E2 means that match E1, then match E2. So if the exception doesn't match E1, it won't match E1, E2. As an example of combining literals and white space, read the uh, rule else block, and it matches the literal else, then it matches literal column, and then it matches the rule block. Uh, next, pipe. Uh, E1 pipe E2 matches E1 or E2, but as a feature of peg, this is an ordered choice. Left comes first. 
rules using pipe may be written side by side, but you may insert new lines for each expression. To do so, put pipe before the first expression. There is no semantic difference. Uh, so it is simply for formatting purposes. So this format and this format is the so same equivalent. Next, parentheses. This means a group. If there is an um, uh, E in parentheses, it matches E. And E1, E2 in the parentheses matches E1, E2. The next two have the same meaning, bracket and question. Bracket E or E question may or may not match E. Now let's see the symbols in the second half. Asterisk matches zero or more occurrences. E asterisk matches zero or more E. And E1, E2 group asterisk matches zero or more E1, E2. Plus matches one or more expressions. Ah, sorry, one or more occurrences. So asterisk is zero or more, and plus is one or more. As an extension of plus, uh, S period E plus matches one or more occurrence of E separated by S. This is similar to Python strings join method. So comma period E plus matches one or more occurrence of E separated by comma. Then I introduce look ahead. Up to this point, like this rule A, B, uh, we have been consuming tokens to see if they match. Look ahead sees if token matches without consuming it. Uh, the rule A and B as look ahead matches the sequence uh, A, B, but uh, without consuming, so next token is B. Uh, and is positive look ahead. And E uh, succeeds if it matches E. E is required to match, but not consumed by match. Exclamation is negative look ahead. Exclamation E fails if it matches E. Uh, we are expecting for no matches. As an example, let's look at the rule primary. Uh, negative look ahead are uh, period, parentheses, and bracket. If A is atom and there are not A period or A parentheses or A bracket, then the talk matches the primary rule. The following talks are not consumed. Finally, children, uh, this represents a commit. The rule name has a commit children in parentheses. Uh, suppose the sequence of tokens start with parentheses. We will see if it matches the expression in the sum rule one, even if it does not match Another choice sum or two is not considered due to the tilde of the commit. So far, we introduced many symbols. This is only a small part of peg, and grammar action is amazing. The syntax error message has been improved since Python 3.10, you know? The secret is the grammar action. Uh, if you are interested, please take a look at PEP 617. These are the parts that define the statements. I have introduced how to read or meaning of each symbol in the peg. Now you are ready to read the definitions of compound statements. Okay, final part, these are definitions.
In this part, we will read the concrete syntax definitions together. We read here the definitions written in PEG on reference full grammar specification. And compound statements are written in BNF, not PEG, so they are not within the scope this time. When I read the definitions by PEG, I was impressed, a simple viewpoint, and the definition explain concisely without omission. There are the five we will read together. Uh, references include other statements with try, etc. Please read them later if you are interested. The assumption in reading peg is that the program has been tokenized, so we have a sequence of tokens. The parser checks that the sequence of tokens matches the rules. We will now read the syntax definition from the parser's point of view. First, if statement. The reference says that if statement is used for conditional execution, and that is how we use it. Here's the question. How would you explain the syntax of if statement? After this, I will introduce the, what I will do and look out how it is actually defined in PEG. Have you settled on an idea? I will thoroughly enumerate cases. First of all, I divide the if only case and if else case by the presence of or absence of else. Next, I will divide the cases by L if, but it was hard to cover all the cases so that there are no omissions. If there are, uh, if there are zero L if, we have already seen them. I enumerate one L if case two or more if case, and one if and one else case, and more L two or more if and one else case. This is how it is described in the peg. Let's read through this together. You will see the block several times. Block. What is block in a nutshell? A block consists of statements or one or more statements. A statement consists of a compound statement or multiple simple statements. So a block can be multiple statements with line breaks and indentation, or it can be multiple simple statements that continue without line breaks. First, look at a rule if stmt. A clause consisting of a header starting the keyword if and the following block is required. It takes care with presence or absence of every after the if. If you look at L if STMT rule, it is defined as a header that start with a if. I think the point is that a if may or may not be followed by more here. In summary, if is required, the a if is written down focusing on whether it is there or not, and else is optional. I was impressed by the simplicity and no omissions of this explanation. I wonder here to name the expression. Name the expression is defined as an assignment expression or a non-assignment expression. There is a negative look ahead here. After reading the definition, I realized that the assignment expression was such a big change that it affects the syntax of the control flow. Note that the rule named as expression also appears in the next while statement. The 
the while statement is used for repeated execution as long as an expression is true. The syntax of the while statement is defined by just these two lines. A clause consisting of a header starting with the while keyword and the following blocks is required, and the else block is optional. Uh, about while else, if the expression is false, the suite of the else clause is executed at the loop and the loop terminates. When a break a statement executed, the else clause is not executed. This kind of syntax is defined in Python. I recommend not using it just because you know about it now. Effective Python says avoid else blocks after four and five loops because they are easily misunderstood. Our next for statement. For statement is used to iterate over the elements of a sequence or other iterable object. The syntax is defined this way. Scroll sideways to see it. Uh, let a think for be out of scope today. A clause consisting of a header starting with the keyword for and the following block here is required. And the type comment and else block are optional. What is a type comment? In fact, you can speci specify the type of a variable like this after the header of a for statement. When the items are exhausted, the suite in the else clauses is uh, executed and the loop terminates. When a break statement executed, the else clause is not executed. I recommend not using else block in loop. Plus two, read function definition. A function definition defines a user-defined function object. Uh, it's a lot, but let's look at them in order. The function def shows whether one or more decorators or, or not. We will leave async def out of scope and look at function def row rule, a clause consisting of a header starting with a keyword def and the containing function name and the parentheses and the following block. Block is required. Then else block, oh sorry, and params and expression type hint and func type comment is optional. The optional rule func type comment is for compatibility with Python 2.7. You can comment the parameters and return types immediately like this. Finally, let's look at the match statement. The match statement is used for pattern matching. I brought this from what's new in Python 3.10. The soft keywords match and case have been introduced, which enable us to write pattern matching. For example, we can write fizzbuzz quite clearly using the match statement. The syntax definition looks like this. Let's look in order. The rule match stmt starts with the soft keyword match, uh, which is required. There are one or more case block. Since new line and indent are required, we, now, we know that case cannot be written on the same line as the header of match. Uh, what is case block? A header that begins the soft keyword case is required and must be followed by a block. And the block can be written on the same line or indented on one new line. Uh, there is a guard which is optional, uh, but forms part of the header starting with case. So a uh, 
God is a part of Hedda. Here is an example of a God and using flag as God. When the tuple uh, 100, 200 comes in, the first case block is not executed because the guard fails. It matches the next case block here. There are the five syntax definitions we have read together. We have tested the definitions of compound statements. The viewpoint of PEG is interested and PEG expresses concisely without omissions. Wrap up, completed. I focus on the appearance of compound statements of current Python, what is called concrete syntax. We learned how to read PEG and tested the syntax of compound sentences. Compound statements consist of headers and suites, colons and indents tell the parser the elements of statements. We read PEG together and taste PEG's concise expression without omissions. One of the messages is language difference is difficult but exciting. Thank you very much for your attention.